Okay. So yeah, I just wanted to go through um, after Liz uh, talked a little bit about uh, some of the specifics of the Illinois rules and regulations. Um, so obviously the, the 2018 Farm Bill uh, passed, it was signed by the, the president, um, which uh, drastically uh, changes the, the landscape uh, in the United States for, for hemp. Um, one, of, one, of the, one of the key uh, things that I noticed is they did take out industrial um, not from the research provisions, but from, from the commercial uh, provisions. They, they take out the word industrial and just uh, start referring to it as hemp. Um, and so basically, uh, there are a couple sections of the, the Farm Bill. It's, it's over 500 pages, obviously. Uh, there's, there's a lot of different things covered. Um, but these are kind of the main uh, sections uh, if you're going to, to kind of jump to those in the, in the table of contents. Uh, and also, I'm not sure if these are going to be uh, uh, sent out uh, or if available to you guys, uh, but I do have a, a link uh, to the Farm Bill, and I would uh, read through it and become familiar with it uh, because there's a lot of different information uh, going around, and uh, it, it will help you. So the first, uh, the first section I want to talk about is uh, section 7298, which is the supplemental and alternative crops uh, section. And so what this does is it amends the National Agricultural uh, Research Extension and Teaching Policy Act of 1977. Uh, it extends it uh, to 2023. Um, but in section 1473D, uh, it includes uh, industrial hemp in between uh, the, this, this section. So um, it requires uh, fundamental and applied research related to the development of industrial hemp. Uh, it, it is required in this section. Uh, another interesting thing about this section is that there are specifically $2 million of appropriations available to the secretary to, per, to provide to uh, different states um, as, as part of this. Uh, so it's really encouraging um, the development and understanding of, of, of hemp in the United States and its, and its possibility. Uh, the next section, uh, 7605, uh, just, a, just a few changes in here as well, uh, related specifically to research. And it's interesting to me that they didn't take an industrial out of, out of this portion. Um, but basically, it requires that the Secretary of Agriculture and the USDA uh, uh, pr uh, provide a study or, or um, you know, um, basically uh, include a study uh, that would research um, every agricultural pilot program, whether that be a state, uh, a tribal uh, government, or, or any uh, that has researched uh, industrial hemp. So... 12 months following the, the, the passing of the 2018 Farm Bill, uh, that's required uh, to be submitted to Congress by the, by the Secretary. Uh, I think this is kind of a little too late, ultimately, um, but it is interesting that, that this is being required. Um, another provision in this section that is interesting, uh, it specifically says that effective uh, one year after the date of which the Secretary establishes a plan for the USDA to regulate hemp, uh, it repeals the 7606 section of the 2014 Farm Bill, uh, which has protected hemp uh, growers up until this point in the United States. I'll talk a little bit about that uh, at, at the end. The most uh, significant section um, of changes is uh, section 10. Uh, 113, um, which is specific to commercial hemp production. Uh, and this is where they, they take out industrial uh, and, and they just refer to it as, as hemp. Um, and it, it amends uh, specifically the Agricultural Marketing Act of 1946, which is, which is an important um, uh, provision. Uh, and basically, it defines hemp as, as cannabis and any part or derivative uh, thereof of, of cannabis that is testing below three-tenths of a percent of Delta-9 THC. Uh, that's, that's an important uh, part, too. Um, hemp is cannabis, right? And products made from hemp are considered hemp, right? So when you talk about hemp, it doesn't matter whether it's flour or oil extracted from hemp. It's all hemp, right, which is defined as any product 
that is testing less than three tenths of a percent THC. So that requires that your oil and derivatives and products, final products going to market, also contain less than three tenths of a percent THC by volume, which is which is important. Um, Basically, it requires states and tribes to submit a plan to the Secretary of Agriculture if they want primary authority over the uh, development and regulation and monitoring of industrial hemp in their state. If they don't want primary authority, uh, they can completely let the USDA take over. Uh, and the USDA, instead of, let's say, the, the Illinois Department of Agriculture, would actually provide licenses in, in, in lieu of a state license if a state did not move forward um, with – uh, regulating and, and wanting uh, uh, authority over monitoring hemp. Obviously, it doesn't look like Illinois, uh, you know, they, they will move forward. Um, and I think that ultimately, Illinois' plan and, and regulations will, will fit with, with what they're looking for. Um, in this section, it specifically states that states and tribes may go beyond the requirements and, and be more restrictive, if you will. Um, so, for instance, in Illinois, uh, the requirement that you can't have a drug misdemeanor uh, could be could be capped. Uh, the, the USDA is not going to say that you can't you can't do that. Um, the 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 plan th that the states must provide to me they seem uh, pretty simple. Uh, basically, they want to know the location of where hemp uh, producers are producing. Uh, hemp. Uh, now, when they say hemp producers, to me, that would say cultivators, processors, and, and really anybody manufacturing or, or, or making a final product. Uh, and they have to keep that for, for three years, uh, I would assume, from the date of licensure. Um, and then it also requires uh, procedures for testing. Um, this, this changed a couple times, uh, and I was very happy to see the final wording of this, and, and I'll explain why. So, when, when they test industrial hemp, uh, an agronomist or, or somebody will come out and, and take a sample uh, in the field, and then they will go back, and there's, there's two main methods of, of testing, which would be gas chromatography or liquid chromatography. Um, and so the cannabis plant will have delta-9 THC, but then it will also have THCA, which is the acid form of THC. Um, it's not psychoactive, and uh, heat turns THCA, over to delta 9 THC. So your requirement is not to go over three tenths of a percent delta 9 THC. Okay? So if they're going to test with gas chromatography, it essentially takes your sample and heats it up past the point of uh, combustion, right? Which will turn all the THCA over to delta 9 THC. So there was originally in this in here that they would require post decarboxylation testing methods which would be gas chromatography they slipped in right at the end or other reliable methods right so right now in the state of wisconsin um they're doing they're allowing liquid chromatography and so i've seen test results where you might have delta 9 thc of less than three tenths of a percent but you might have thca of like 0 0.67 0 0.8 Right. Whereas if they did test gas chromatography, that test would your your hemp would fail. So this is an important provision of the of the 2018 Farm Bill because it allows uh, states to use liquid chromatography uh, for the testing uh, process. However, I do want to note that when creating distillate and things like that, you're gonna you're gonna decarboxylate, and so ultimately you're gonna have problems possibly with your final products. Um, the other uh, procedure that it requires is for the disposal of hemp produced in violation of, of, of this provision. Um, it doesn't say that it needs to be burned. It just says the disposal. Um, and so ultimately, if the state wanted to try uh, to allow some other form of disposal that may be uh, allowed for internal use, um, we would have to see if the USDA came back and, and, and made recommendations that that was, not, that was too liberal, maybe. Um, they also want to know that the states have the resources uh, to carry out this program. Uh, this is uh, interesting in Illinois because uh, in the Illinois uh, legislation, there is, no, um, there is no appropriations for this program. This is going to be 100% funded by the fees that you guys pay. Um, and then also, basically, they want to know that if the Department of the USDA uh, ever asks for information, they're going to get it within 30 days uh, related to the location, any of your information, uh, and, and any kind of production information that they're looking for. 
Um, they they said that you might you might you may add any other practices or procedures as long as uh, it's consistent with the subtitle. However, they may be more stringent, so the state could regulate it on a more stringent level. Um, so basically, uh, the the USDA has 60 days um, following the receipt of the plan to review and either approve or disapprove of that plan. Uh, if they disapprove of that plan, they can make recommendations, they can get involved in the process, and they can, they can help uh, craft um, you know, the, the, the correct rules and regulations that fit their monitoring uh, guidelines. If the state says, you know what, uh, we, don't, we, we, don't, we wanna give primary authority over you, the USDA would move forward and, and regulate the program themselves. Um, it says that states uh, may amend uh, their plan and resubmit if, if, they're, if they're denied. Uh, the secretary at any time may audit the compliance of, uh, of the plan uh, and procedures, which I would, I would hope that the state of Illinois uh, would not have any issue with carrying out their, their, their plans and procedures. Um, and ultimately, uh, if they do find noncompliance, they would help the state of Illinois recomply. Um, they may revoke the tribal plan and establish their own plan uh, for monitoring industrial hemp as well. Um, I'd like to talk about this section because I know it's been brought up a couple different times uh, with respect to people in Illinois worried about maybe uh, their, their crop testing hot, um, so which, which, which could happen in other states, especially states that don't regulate the, the, where you source your, your seed from. Um, and so the, the, there's two different levels of, of violations in the 2018 Farm Bill. There is negligent violations, and there's a culp culpable mental state greater than negligence. Uh, they really don't define what, what the second one is, but it, but it might give you a good understanding that a negligent violation is, is pretty much disregarding their, their rules, Provide, uh, failing to provide your location, uh, failing to obtain a license, um, or producing cannabis that's greater than three-tenths of a percent of Delta-9 THC. Now, the first two, that seems pretty easy to control, right? Um, the last one, you, you, may, you might be a little worried about that, right? Um, well, I'll talk about that in a second. But um, basically, uh, if you do pro uh, produce cannabis that's more than three-tenths of a percent Delta-9 THC, uh, it is considered a negligent violation, but not necessarily something uh, to 100% worry about. So the result of this um, is specifically stated in this federal uh, farm bill that it shall not result in any criminal enforcement action by federal government or any state government, tribal government, or local government. Just because your crop tests hot, it is in the federal farm bill that you will not be prosecuted. You cannot be criminally prosecuted. Ultimately, you cannot be criminally prosecuted for not even telling the USDA or the state of Illinois where you're growing hemp or, or um, you know, growing cannabis deliberately. Um, basically, there's a corrective action plan uh, if, you, if, you, if you violate it, uh, they try to put you back in compliance. And if you violate three times in a five-year period, uh, after the third violation, you're, you're, you're not allowed to grow hemp for five years. Um, ultimately, that should be pretty easy to control. And I would imagine everybody in here has good intentions about what they're trying to do. So, um, and then uh, the culpable mental state greater than negligence, it basically just says it's going to be uh, results in uh, being reported to the attorney general and state and local law enforcement. So um, there's really, uh, that's kind of where it's, it's wide open. Um, but I feel like there's a, a decent amount of proje protection with the, with the negligent violations. <clears throat> so um, one of the things that recently came out about the USDA was um, they're not planning on, on, on producing their plan and guidelines for this season. Um, it probably will not be until the fall of 2019. Uh, and as you read earlier, that once the USDA establishes their plan, 12 months from that plan is when 7606 of the 2014 Farm Bill is repealed. So ultimately, all of you guys will be protected by the 2014 Farm Bill until such time that the 7606 is repealed. Um, Section 7606 of the Farm Bill was a godsend for, for the hemp industry. Um, in, in the United States. The biggest impact of this section is, is 
three words that say notwithstanding the Controlled Substances Act. So what it is saying is, is that if you are in compliance with 7606, you are beyond the preview of the Controlled Substances Act. You are, you are not producing a product that, that falls under the Controlled Substances Act. Um, and basically, it requires research. However, in the provision of the research, it allows for you to research the marketability of hemp, which includes bringing hemp to market, right? And so that's how all of these uh, hemp producers um, you, you see big companies like Charlotte's Web and Mary's Medicinals, uh, and you're like, wow, you know, there's this research requirement, and it seems like they're, you know, uh, you know, involved very much in commercial activity, and that's because this research requirement wasn't wasn't um, hindering their commercial activity because they were able to document that they were researching the marketability of of these products that they were making, um, which is which is important um, because ultimately. I know Liz talked a little bit about the research and, and the, the reporting that's going to be required in Illinois, um, but it would ultimately be good as well um, to have some plan of documenting uh, the products that you're making and maybe why you're making those products and, and, and what you're looking to do uh, in terms of researching the marketability of those products. It, it can't hurt for, for this planting season to at least have that. If anybody needs help with, with the research, I, I, the research documentation of that plan, I have helped uh, clients in, in various states uh, do that. It is, it is not that difficult, um, so, so we can definitely talk about that. Um, I want to talk really quickly, too, about a recent court case, um, KABLLC versus the United States Postal Service. Okay? Um, basically, there was a shipment of uh, hemp isolate. Okay, I extracted from hemp down to a powder form. And this hemp isolate was shipped through the United States Postal Service, and it was um, taken by the USPS. And uh, a lady by the name of Courtney Moran, who was very involved in, in Wisconsin and the development of Oregon's uh, hemp program, uh, took this case on uh, to, to help KAB. And um, the uh, administrative law judge in, in the case ruled in favor of KAB because they had chain of custody paperwork, they had certificate of analysis, they, have, they had a license from the Colorado Department of Agriculture, um, and they were following all guidelines of, of their license. And so what the uh, administrative law judge uh, overturned was that the same thing I talked about earlier, is that notwithstanding the Controlled Substances Act, they were in compliance with 7606 of the Farm Bill, had all the proper documentation, and therefore their product was not within the preview of the Controlled Substances Act, which, which made it completely legal. Um, the other thing, too, I've had a lot of farmers ask me about uh, a, a IRS tax code provision, um, specifically related uh, to trafficking controlled substance. Um, and that is what hemp producers and, or uh, cannabis producers and processors are subject to. Uh, they cannot deduct their ordinary and necessary business expenses. Uh, if you're being told by a CPA that underneath the 2014 Farm Bill you cannot deduct your uh, ordinary and necessary business expenses, that person doesn't know what they're talking about. Um, you can deduct all of your ordinary and necessary business expenses because you are not, con you are not trafficking a controlled one, uh, uh, Schedule 1 substance as long as you are in compliance with Section 7606 of the Farm Bill. Until that goes away, that's what I would become familiar with, and I would, I would, I would definitely uh, be very knowledgeable um, ab about that. Uh, I, I would assume there's going to be uh, some, some misinterpretation. Uh, there definitely has been over the years, um, and it's especially uh, recently with the DEA uh, bringing about like an extract uh, registration code. Um, the, uh, the Hemp Industries Association went through a, a court case to make sure that that wasn't being, um, you know, um, uh, improperly uh, understood by law enforcement. I mean, things were getting seized. And basically, it, it comes down to the source law, right? Is your oil, is your product, is your tincture, is your gummies, were they made from Farm Bill compliant hemp? That's what matters. If your products were made from Farm Bill compliant, compliant hemp, it is hemp, it is legal. So, 
Uh, other, a couple other key uh, provisions, no felony drug convictions within the, uh, for po uh, 10 years post-conviction. Uh, um, it doesn't say anything about misdemeanors. It doesn't say anything about crimes of dishonesty. Ultimately, I would hope uh, that the state of Illinois would just comply with the federal, uh, this provision. Um, it specifically authorizes appropriations, uh, which, is, which is a very positive thing. Um, it protects interstate commerce and travel. Uh, there have been issues before where people have to fight cases, like I just talked about. Uh, this specifically protects interstate commerce and travel. Uh, the state of Illinois cannot restrict someone from uh, Kentucky uh, driving a hemp uh, load up to Wisconsin for processing. Uh, it also allows for uh, federal crop insurance, uh, such as other crops, uh, and provides uh, for USDA uh, license where states do not license hemp producers. So. Uh, there is a listening session tomorrow, uh, March 13th. Uh, you can register, if you just type in uh, USDA uh, hemp listening session, um, it's free to register, and I think it's from like noon until maybe 3 o'clock tomorrow. Uh, and then also there is a good frequently asked questions page on the USDA's website. And I think we're into the next.